All right, in this video, we're going to code a neural network from the ground up um, using nothing but NumPy and Pandas, which are popular libraries for manipulating data sets and performing mathematical calculations. Uh, so yeah, from scratch, we're not going to use any of the fancy libraries like TensorFlow or PyTorch. Uh, and the reason why you might want to learn how to do this is it gives you a deeper understanding of what's going on uh, underneath the hood. All right, so to get started, we're going to use what is often considered the hello world of neural networks, and that is the MNIST data set. And that is a data set of hand-drawn digits uh, that are 28 by 28 pixels in width and height. And thus, you, if you multiply it together, you get 784 pixels. And so this is kind of what the data looks like. You have these rows that are labeled. So the, uh, this one would be the number one, right? And these are pixels in that image. Most of them are zero because like, if you look at the number one, most of the space is just white space. And so um, if we scrolled over here, you would eventually see some uh, numbers in there between zero and 255 that represents grayscale uh, colors that make up the digit. Um, this data set is uh, widely available. Um, I have a, a link I'll provide on Kaggle, so you can uh, download it if you want. And yeah, and so we're, we're going to use this to um, run through our neural network. There's about 40,000 rows in here. It's a large data set. Um, so what's going on? How does this neural network uh, work? Now, I'm just going to go over real kind of high level view. If you want more detail, I have videos I made uh, a little while back that I will link in the description that go in much greater detail in each of these processes. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, um, you have your um, digits, these these uh, pixels that are going to be your initial um, values in the input layer, right? And uh, then you are going to perform uh, you have going to have weights and biases that are randomly assigned values at the beginning. Uh, and then you use the input values and those weights and biases and you calculate a the dot product calculation. Again, if you want more details on this, I have other videos. I'm not going to get into the details of those calculations in this video. And then you also run the relu function to the, this results in the values for the hidden layer. Um, and then you have another set of weights and biases that you use um, to with these values to get your output layers um, values. And typically you wouldn't use the um, relu function for the output layer. You use the softmax and you'll see that in the code. So I'm just telling you, just giving you kind of highlights of what you're going to see in the code. Um, and then uh, you do what's called one hot encoding your output results uh, and th then you kind of determine how far off you were um, and by how far off I mean there's a there's going to be I'm only showing you a little bit here there's going to be 10 um, neurons in your output layer because there's 10 possible digits between 0 and 9 and the label here is kind of what you are looking for that's what you wanted the neural network to predict and you're um, using one hot encoding to find out how far off it was from that prediction and what you do with that value knowing how far off you you then tweak your weights and biases and that's called the back propagation and basically what you do is you run all the ca calculations I talked about in the forward um, propagation but in reverse getting the derivative of your values and you update weights and biases with the derivative values and then you use those values to run back do the forward propagation again and you just keep on doing that um, you check your accuracy uh, uh, how far you were off from the label for all your training data um, and in this code we're actually going to run this through 500 times and we're going to run about 10,000 rows 500 times in here and we'll see what our accuracy is 
and I'll, I'll show you what those results look like. All right, so um, let's get right into the code. So there's a few libraries that you'll need, like I said, NumPy and Pandas. Um, if you don't have them installed, it's a very simple pip install NumPy, pip install Pandas. I actually do use matplotlib, so you, you probably would want to install that as well. Same thing, pip install um, matplotlib. We use Pandas to grab our data set. So this data set should be um, in a subfolder within your project. Um, or if you, if you want to just uh, put it right in the project root folder, you would just um, make sure you are pointing right to it wherever it is. We'll save it as a variable called data that will bring in all this data. Like I said, I think it has about 40,000 rows. And what we do here is we convert that to a NumPy array and we get the shape of it. M represents the rows and the columns. We're gonna shuffle that data, basically just randomize the data. Uh, and then we break it into parts for the, what I refer to it as dev, that is your testing data. This won't be used till after we train, but we set aside um, zero to a thousand, so the first a thousand rows, which were shuffled, so it's not really the first thousand rows, but we're just setting aside a thousand rows. Um, this dot T means we transpose it. That means all these um, rows, uh, all these columns become rows. So this label column becomes of the first row or row zero, if you would. Um, and and so that's why this right here, the Y dev represents your labels. All right. And yeah, you do, we divide those um, grayscale numbers by 255. 255 is the highest number it could have been. And so that will then give us a number between zero and one. That's gonna work better for our mathematical calculations. It'll make everything run a little faster. And we do a very similar process, but we do this now for our training data. This is the data that's actually gonna get run through um, 500 times. And so we, start at the end of our testing data at row 1,000, and we go to M, which in this case is about 40,000. Um, and we transpose that just like we did the other one. All right, so you'll see later where we send that through. And as I said, you start out with random weights and biases, and that's represented by the Ws and the Bs. We only have one hidden layer, so you have um, one, uh, two different weights and biases. One that goes from the input to the hidden layer, one that goes from the hidden layer to the output layer. All right, and um, yeah, as I said, our forward prop propagation works dot product. Um, then we get the relu, and then we do the dot product again from our hidden layer to our output layer with the uh, softmax activation function as well. Right, and so that returns what um, those weights and biases are after doing that. Um, then you one hot encode it. This is uh, the relu derivative, which you'll use in backwards propagation. Uh, and so this is what backwards propagation is, which is basically everything we did going forward, but we're getting the derivative. And then after the backwards propagation is done, you're going to go ahead and update your parameters, your weights and biases. Um, and all right, so what you're looking at here, the important thing here is the gradient descent. The gradient descent is basically the process of updating those weights and biases to get it to a spot that is close to or the best we can predicting what the values are. Um, and so our iterations, as you'll see, we send it through um, a about 500 times, We're actually send them through uh, a thousand times and so that's what's going on here we're doing the forward propagation we're doing the back propagation updating the parameters uh, how accurate were we that's what we do here we test what our predictions were and get an accuracy value and then we just keep looping through this iterating through uh, for as many times as we set in this parameter right here that is um, basically the whole process uh, the last thing I'll show you is these are, um, we set aside a thousand values. We're just going to do for testing right here. We just do a um, five different ones that we test. 
And yeah, as I said, we use matplotlib to just show what the image looks like. So you get an idea of what it's trying to predict. And so let me just show you what that looks like. So as you can see here, these were all the different iterations that it ran through. And it was every time through it gave us the accuracy value, which if you look back in the beginning, um, it was much, sorry, uh, much lower. Uh, it started out at like 20%, uh, but it did end up getting to um, 84%, which is pretty good. Um, that's, that's, I'd be satisfied with that. And so the number that popped up was a six um, and it predicted a six and that's what the actual label was. So it did a great job there. And this isn't even a, a well-drawn six, I would say. So if we get out of this, the next one will pop up. Um, so that was a, a five and it predicted a five. So well done. Again, not really a great drawn digit. Um, I'm going to guess that's an eight. Oh no, it's a two. It actually predicted a two. And another five that it got right as well. And lastly, a four. Um, so it got all, all the our test values right. So this is a well-trained uh, set. So in the next video, I'll show you how you can save those weights and biases as your um, trained model so that you don't have to run this through 500 um, uh, epochs every time to go ahead and use it, that you can actually just use those weights and biases to um, run new data on it. All right, so I hope you found this interesting. Uh, let me know if you have any follow-up questions. Thanks.